All right, now we're sitting down with Paul Blum from NeuroCaris, also at IndieBio Demo Day batch number six. This is awesome. Biotech's so amazing. I'm so grateful to I love have it. you here. I love it. Yeah, love it. So, all right, Paul was just teaching us about NeuroCaris, which is working on a proprietary molecule that inhibits pain directly in the location that it's applied. That's correct. So teach us about this. Right, so pain is something that happens in the periphery of your body. It doesn't happen in your brain. In fact, when people have brain surgery, the brain itself doesn't experience any pain. It's all on the periphery of your body, and it's because of the presence in your body of what are called sensory neurons. Oh, you could call them pain neurons, but they're all outside of the brain, and they are what has the sensation. They transmit a signal to your brain. Your brain goes, oh, that's pain, and it typically responds by sending a signal back down to the same location through a different neuron called a motor neuron that triggers a muscle, and the muscle makes you jerk your hand or your knee away from whatever was hurting you. Okay. Holy so that's cow. That's called the pain, the pain circuit. So that pain circuit, mm -hmm. let's just do that one more time. Yep. So we have a sensory neuron yes. that goes and then that goes back to the motor. Through, through a motor neuron, neuron to a muscle and the muscle helps you get away, away from, the, from pain. the pain. Yep. Whoa. So that all happens in a millisecond. That's right. Super fast. Holy cow. Okay. And so what opioids do, just in contrast, not our drug, but opioids is they act systemically, they're not targeted. You take a pill like OxyContin, dissolves in your stomach, enters your bloodstream, all the tissues in your body are exposed to this drug and any tissue that has an opioid receptor responds to the drug. And that's fine if it's a pain neuron. The problem is that you have pleasure centers in your brain and when they respond, oh. you get addicted to the euphoria. And if it's the breathing center in your brain, you stop breathing, which is why people die when they overdose, they suffocate. Okay, that's wow. the side effect of an untargeted drug. So our drug is targeted, and it's in part targeted because we administer it by injection. You don't yeah. take it as a yes, pill, yes. but also because there's no reason to treat your brain. You don't need to treat your You yeah. want to treat the pain. pain. The pain is located peripherally. It's located whatever you did to yourself, or if it's some sort of degenerative disease, you want to treat that point. Okay, so it's, the, but the goal is to stop the generation of the pain signal. Yes. So it's like an electric wire, and you just cut the wire. And so that's essentially what we're doing, though it's not permanent. So far in our studies, yes. our drug is reversible. So it lasts for about four days, and then it mm -hmm. wears off, which mm -hmm. opiate lasts for one day. Mm -hmm. We're hoping to try to extend the duration. But the important thing is, because it wears off, it means the drug is reversible. Yes. Which means there's that's no crucial. permanent effect on these sensory neurons. That has to be. It, they must come back to life yeah, because if you yeah. got the pain again, right? So, so that's important. And you want to feel again. Yes, yes yeah. absolutely. You want to yes. retain sensation. Yes. So, basically, that's how. Holy it's cow! Okay, so, so it's a rational so approach important. to pain control. Now, why do we use opioids? How come so much pain control? Why do we have an epidemic? It's because. Pain wasn't even recognized as a problem in human. In the 1960s, you'd go to the dentist, you'd get yourself a, a tooth pulled, and if you were a child, they didn't give you any pain control because children weren't supposed to feel pain according to the American uh, uh, um, Children's, what's it called, the American Pediatric Society. Okay? And then by the mid-70s, late-70s, pain started to be recognized as a vital sign in the US medical system. And doctors were allowed to ask how you felt and then treat the pain. And what was available at that time was historic pain control drugs, opioids, mm -hmm. or other related drugs. And then that was fine. People started taking opioids. And then the drug companies came out with longer acting opioids, which were claimed to be non-addictive. And it turned out that was wrong. And as a consequence, we ended up with the opioid epidemic. So why do we use these drugs? Because they're historic. You know, 5,000 years of pain control with these plant drugs. They're not engineered drugs. They're not rationally designed drugs. They're not targeted drugs. And now we're targeting exactly where the pain is. That's correct. And we're injecting. That's right. So, so and we're also working on a topical, so a cream. A, oh, cool. In fact, so our drug well. is, is being, nice. has already now been recognized by one of the National Institutes of Health of which are, there are 23 U.S. federal agencies charged with biomedical research, and this one is on drug abuse. It's called the National Institutes of Drug Abuse. And they have recognized our drug because of its potential to fight the opioid epidemic. Great. And they want us to do the topical. 
And right now, so, is it quite expensive to get? Well, drug? our drug is not in manufacturing. We are in what's called preclinical development. You're still preclinical. We know how to make the thing. We know how to test it in animals. It works great. Stops pain in animals. We have not tested it on people yet. Yeah. That's why we're raising money. We're trying to get into clinical trials awesome. of humans. And how was this molecule even developed? How did we figure it out? We created it. It's by protein engineering. So my partner, Ben Pavlik, and I have 30 years of protein engineering experience. Wow. And we came up with it in a rational design type of an approach. We said, sensory neurons are the target. How do you target them? Yeah. Oh, take proteins, modify them, and then this is a multifunctional protein. It doesn't just bind these unique neurons. It actually goes inside of them, and inside of them it targets a structure uh, called the axon, which is what connects the nerve to your brain, right? and then it targets a specific protein inside of there called actin, and it destabilizes the actin, and when that happens, you cut the wire. So there's no more transmission of the pain signal. So that all requires three functions in this engineered protein. Wow. So it's a complex protein. Okay, so then the, the molecule is a protein, yours. Is. That's correct. It's and a biological, we call it. it in a biological pro protein, yeah. engineered protein, uh -huh. and then it goes into the neuron, the sensory neuron Into itself. it. Binds to the outside uniquely. doesn't bind motor neurons, only binds sensory, sensory neurons. goes inside, and then, and then it releases, that's actually a big step, uh -huh. what's called a therapeutic payload. And that payload is yeah. another protein that modifies this protein called actin, and actin is what makes up the cytoskeleton, which is the structure that gives you that long finger-like projection, which is what connects the neuron to your brain. So in a, you can have a sensory neuron on your finger. It has an axon, and it goes all the way down your arm, all the way to your spinal column. Yeah. That long structure requires a little skeleton, and that's the actin. You change the structure of yeah. that skeleton, you block the pain transmission. That's so amazing. But it happens over here, because yeah, you're correct. putting it on the tip of your finger. And hopefully it can just be topological soon. Yeah, that's what yeah, we would yeah. like. Yeah, and nobody likes how, needles. So. <laughs> about how much um, of, the, of, of uh, neurocaris do you need? How much of the drug? Yeah. Well, right now we're one-fifth the, what's called, one-fifth the molar dose of an opiate. So in our animal drug trials, we compete against opiates. And so we're talking about using animals, we're doing behavior studies, we're doing pain yeah, tests, okay? Yeah. So we compete against opiates and both are injected. And the amount that we inject is one-fifth the amount of the opiate. So we yeah. know it's more potent. Yeah. One way to answer That's it. That's good. That's good. And we also know it's longer acting. Amazing. This has tremendous potential in the world. Tremendous. I'm super excited about it. Absolutely. And it's, it's, what's odd is that there hasn't been much innovation in pain control. And that's, there's a reason. The reason is because it's not recognized as a disease where the U.S. in particular has put so much research money into. It's always about diseases. Pain is a symptom. And so it's not formally addressed in our current funding mechanism in the United States. So it's unfortunate. Uh, and it's also unfortunate because we have this other stuff called opioids. And there's a whole incumbent market for that. For oh, opioids. highly developed, geopolitical, yeah. all yeah, sorts of correct, stuff, right? Exactly. And it's complicated. And it's good. I'm happy that you guys are tackling this. Is there something else about NeuroCaris that we should know? We're a startup company. We're looking for investors. We're trying to get in to, uh, to complete our what are called preclinical development efforts yeah, and yeah. get into clinical trials. And we're targeting osteoarthritis. That's our primary indication. So that's mostly for people with back pain, lower back pain, or knees, so sometimes it's shoulder, finger joints, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and that's our primary goal because the type of treatment options for those things aren't good. So there's not even, you know, you can take opioids, but they're oftentimes not effective for strong back pain or strong joint pain um, because uh, for all sorts of reasons. Sometimes people are allergic, sometimes they become addicted, sometimes. Sure. And doctors are now being regulated so they can't prescribe as much because of the addiction problem. So those, that's what we're talking about. I think that's, that's probably it, yeah. Paul, this is such a pleasure. Thank you for thank what you. You, you and Ben, yes, your partner. Yes, Ben Pavlik. Yeah, thank you so much for you what betcha. you're doing. This has been a blast. Thank you. And I'll send you a message. Great, with, appreciate it. With the Thanks a lot. Of the clip.